Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and these are the new iPad Air M3 for 2025. They're very similar to what we had last year as far as the boxes. In fact, they're hard to tell the difference. So you'll see here, they didn't bother to change the wallpaper or anything else. And the only way you can really tell the difference is on the back, it says M3. Now they start at the same price as last year's iPads, $599, up to $14.49, depending on the overall model, the overall storage, as well as cellular options. They go from 128 up to one terabyte. We still have the same colors, blue, purple, starlight, and space gray. Let's go ahead and open these up. The new thing this year is the new Magic Keyboard. We'll take a closer look at that in a moment, but let's first take a look at the 11 inch. So like I said, it's the 11 inch with Wi-Fi, the base model. Let's undo the packaging here. And they didn't even bother to change the wallpaper, which is a bit odd. So it's hard to differentiate between them. So let's take a look, see what we've got. And this is the blue color. We'll set this aside for a moment. And inside we still get a power adapter, which is great. We'll take a closer look in just a moment. And in here, we've got a little warranty card, no stickers, and then a quick start guide. So basically what we expect nowadays from Apple with this, and then this should be a 20 watt adapter. So you can see that here. Again, we have a cable included, USB-C. It's braided, so that's nice that we've got the power adapter and the cable included still. And hopefully they continue to do that and maybe even bring it back with the iPhone. Let's go ahead and take the cover off of this one. So again, this is the blue color. We'll compare it to blue from last year in just a moment. So we'll put this down. Let me put this away and we'll take a look at the 13 inch as well. So here is the 13 inch. Again, if we take a closer look, iPad Air 13 inch M3 with Wi-Fi. We'll take the pull tabs off here. And I believe this is the silver one. So again, same thing inside, 20 watt adapter the braided cable. Let's take the wrapper off of this. And this is actually space gray. For some reason, I thought I got silver. So now we can compare the colors compared to last year, see if there's any difference here. So let's close the boxes up and we'll take a closer look. So if I bring in last year's iPads, you'll see the color wise, they're exactly the same. So Pretty much no difference whatsoever. That's a bit confusing, of course, if you've gone, gone from one year to the other. However, most people are probably not doing that. But either way, I would like to see Apple change this, at least change the wallpaper, make something a little bit different to help differentiate both of them. Now let's go ahead and set aside the other ones. So we'll go ahead and let me make sure I've got the right ones here. And also one thing you may have already noticed, on the back, it says iPad Air on the old ones, on the new ones, it says nothing. So that's something that, again, seems like a little bit of Apple being lazy almost. I'm not sure what's going on there. So again, we'll set these aside. There's no real difference physically with them. Now let's take a look around the outside edge. So we have our volume buttons on the right-hand side, along with the little adapter for the pencil. And then on the bottom, You'll see that we have USB-C, we've got our speaker ports, one is a resonance chamber, we've got pogo pins on the back, and then on the other side, we don't have anything at all, and then on the top, again, we have speakers. Let's go ahead and turn them on, we'll get them set up, and then we'll take a closer look at what's installed, and then we'll take a look at the Magic Keyboard. So let's turn them both on here. There we go, and we'll get them set up. So we'll set this one up here. It'll connect using my iPhone, makes it real easy. And I'll set this one up in just a moment. We'll set it up first for myself here, and then we'll put in the password of the phone on the iPad. Now it's asking me to install the updated software. We'll do that a little bit later to see the pre-installed version. Then we'll go through data and privacy. We'll tap continue. Now it's asking to set up touch ID. So we'll do that again, nice and quick here. There we go. And then We'll capture more of our fingerprint here just by doing this. And then we'll tap continue. We can add another fingerprint or set that up later. So we'll skip that for now and wait for it to set up the account. So this will take a moment and then we'll agree to terms and conditions. So we'll agree and then it will sign in. Now it's saying, make this your new iPad. We'll go ahead and customize. I want to set it up 
just as though it's new with nothing else on it. So we won't transfer anything. Now it's asking me if I want to update my iPad automatically. So I'm setting this one up at the same time also. Now it's asking for location services. I'll turn that on to use things such as maps and other features. Now it's asking me to add Apple Pay. We'll set that up later. We can set up screen time later. And then iPad analytics. I typically don't share those, but you can if you'd like. And then Apple intelligence. And again, just like the iPad 11th gen or iPad A16, it says Apple intelligence, the start of a new era of Siri. That's been delayed, so we'll tap continue. We can set up Siri now or later. And it's asking if I want to continue in the beta program. I won't on this device right now, but we'll tap continue here and then get started. Now let's finish setting this one up and then we'll take a closer look at everything else. Everything's set up here, at least with the current pre-installed version. And one thing I wanted to mention is the overall weight. The iPad Air 11 inch with the M3 is ever so slightly lighter than the last generation by two grams. So two grams or 0 0.01 pounds where the 13 inch is one gram lighter or the same overall pound weight. So basically the same weight, very, very similar, but that's one of the few small changes. Now let's take a look at the pre-installed version. I've gone into that and you can see iPadOS 18.3 version 22D2062. Now I would imagine we'll have some sort of update. So if we go into that, we'll probably have 18.3.2. We'll give it a second, you'll see that here. But before we go into that and maybe check some benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a look at the Magic Keyboard. Now the Magic Keyboard is fairly expensive. It's 269 for the 11 inch or 319 for the 13 inch that we have here. You can see in the bottom right that it requires iPadOS 18.3 or newer, and it's for iPad Air 13. So you can see that here. Let's go ahead and open it up. So we'll move these aside just for now and we'll take off the tabs here. It is slightly newer, it's slightly different. We'll take a look compared to the older keyboard as well. And this should be backward compatible at least a little bit. So let's go ahead and open it up. So nothing really inside here. We'll take the wrapper off. And then inside, it looks like we've got a little insert here. So there we go. We've got some paperwork like normal, some warranty cards and just information in general. So here's the overall keyboard. You can see that here, we have a function row at the top, similar to the pro keyboard. And of course you've got all of your regular buttons here. Now, the difference between this and the current one is this is not metal. This is sort of that rubbery silicone material, but on the back, it is oval here. We have a pass through with USB-C and then it should connect pretty simply. So if we go ahead and plug in the 13 inch here, let's do that. It should now work. So we should be able to use the trackpad like you would expect. So that works like you would expect. Now with the magic keyboard attached, let's see what we have as far as backlights or anything like that. We'll turn off the lights here and nothing lit up. If we go into the control center, we do have the option for the keyboard light, but we don't have the option to enable it, it looks like. Let me make sure it's not in settings and I don't see anything there. So let's turn the lights back on. Maybe that's why it's slightly cheaper, but we do have all of the regular controls we do on the previous one. Now to compare with what we had before with the iPad Pro keyboard, so let me bring this in. This is the one that's backward compatible. So side by side, you can see it's a little bit bigger as far as the trackpad. It also has a function row. If I move this one over to the last generation, it does work. And again, we can go into keyboard brightness on this one and turn this up. So we do have the option on this keyboard to turn on the brightness there when the lights are off. So the new one does not have that, so you may want to opt for this, but you'll may be missing out on the function row. So that's something worth noting. Now let's go ahead and get these updated and see what we've got here. Now we're updated on both devices. They've rebooted, I've given them a moment, and you'll see we're on iPadOS 18.3.2. Now I did run benchmarks on both of them using Geekbench 6. You can see that here. So on the 13 inch, 2,985, 2,998. Very close, you would expect that as well. Over 11,000 for the multi-core score. Now one thing that's a bit of a shame is just using this a little bit, it feels laggy. Now it is only a 60 hertz display, so no 120 hertz ProMotion, same as last year. And of course it supports Apple Pencil Pro. So if we connect it like that, it says, well, 
welcome to Apple Pencil Pro. Of course, we can use that with all of its latest features, which is really nice that it has it. However, it says, let's tap continue here, get through this. And of course we can use it just like you would expect. Now for the price of this, it's great at the lower end, but at the higher end, I would rather have the iPad Pro. But with the Magic Keyboard and everything else, it's definitely functional, but it doesn't have nano texture. And of course the cameras are the same as last year as well. So there's not a huge reason to upgrade from last year's to this version, but if maybe you're on an older iPad, this iPad Air is great. When it comes to battery, that's identical to what we had last year as well. Basically all iPads are up to 10 hours of surfing the web on Wi-Fi or watching video, nine hours if you're using cellular. So that's basically the same, same charging, everything else. Now we still don't have Wi-Fi 7, we have Wi-Fi 6E with Bluetooth 5.3. No big issues there, we don't have the 5G C1 chipset, but we do have 5G as far as that option if you want cellular. So it's a bit of an odd change here, and we also have advanced eSIM technology. Last year it just says eSIM, this supports advanced eSIM. So again, there's not a huge reason to upgrade from last year's model. You could get last year's model at a very reasonable price now with discounts, and I would probably pick it up over what we have with the regular iPad a16 or 11th generation. I think it's a great device. It's great for everyday use, especially if you don't need a regular computer. But again, it's a hard sell at the price point and not really being a giant upgrade. The M3 does give us a few additional things, such as encoders and things for video if you're editing video on here. But other than that, you're not getting a huge change. So for example, we have ProRes encode and decode engines, AV1 decode, and hardware accelerated 8K HEVC. So some nice upgrades, but again, unless you're doing specific tasks, I would probably look elsewhere, maybe to the Pro. Let me know what you think of the new iPad Air in the comments below. We have no new wallpapers or anything like that. So let me know if you've picked one up. Again, if you don't have one though, they're a great device. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.